Well, welcome to the first course in either the Graduate Certificate or the Master's in Education in Invitational Education that is being offered by Toro University, California. Let me be the first, and I'm probably not the first, but at least I'm the first in this course to welcome you both to this particular program that we're offering as well as to our university community. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, Toro University, California is part of the Toro College system. Uh, Toro College was chartered in the state of New York in 1970 and since then has grown into a worldwide Toro College and University system of which one of those campuses is located in uh, beautiful Mare Island, California and that's us, Toro University, California. Um, Toro University, California, or TUC as we like to call it, uh, was originally created in 1995 in downtown San Francisco. However, in 1993, uh, so a couple of years before the university was actually created, the federal government actually decided that they were going to close down the naval base that had been located on Mare Island. And that closure came complete um, in 1999. And it was at that time, uh, late in 1998, early in 1999, that Toro University, California signed a lease to take over essentially what had been the hospital area or the medical complex for the Tor or the Mare Island Naval um, Station that had been here. So in case you're not familiar uh, with the, the history of our place, and it is something that we're quite proud of because as you walk around campus, uh, the historic buildings that you encounter are quite significant right from the, the, the first uh, entry in here. Um, the Na Mare Island Naval Base itself was actually created or established in 1854 and its first uh, commanding officer was a gentleman by the name of Commander David Farragut and one of the things that you would note if you were able to come to campus is that we actually still have a building on campus it's the former officers mess or officers club that uh, is known as or was named the Farragut Inn after the um, initial gentleman who was the commander uh, when the base was first set up. As you come into the main entrance, and here's actually a picture as you're coming through the main entrance, um, about a hundred meters or a hundred yards or so in, the first thing that you'd notice is what we refer to as the Lincoln Building. Um, now this particular building, uh, it's the one that you see on the right portion of the uh, picture that you see here is actually the main hospital building or H1 as it's formerly known as and you can see to the left one of the two wings now on each side it has mirrored wings so the building that you see on the left side there is a, a ward of the hospital and there's an exact same one like it on the other side on the right side you just don't see with the picture now while the wings or the wards were added later around 1926 1927 the actual main hospital building that you see there in the main portion of the picture or the right hand side of the picture was actually built in 1899 and the reason we call it the Lincoln building is actually because the original the original hospital that was there was actually built during the time of Abraham Abraham Lincoln when Abraham Lincoln was president and um, what ends up happening is when we had the large earthquake here uh, it ends up getting the building actually gets knocked down to the ground but the hospital that you see there so the main hospital that is pictured here is built on the exact same foundation that you have for the um, the original hospital. So basically they took the foundation and just built a new building on top of it. And as I mentioned, you know, it was built back in 1899. Um, so the building as of this year is 118 years old. Um, and, you know, we're going to take a, a look through now as you proceed onward, you actually get to the main part of campus. And this is sort of a, it's not quite an aerial shot, um, but you get sort of an overview of the main campus area. So you see there on the left hand side, right in the corner, is Lander Hall. Uh, Lander Hall is actually named after the first president of Toro College. 
um, uh, Dr. Lander. Um, as you look through, you'll see um, several of the buildings that we've got rehabilitated. Um, so in addition to Lander Hall, over on the far right-hand side, you'll see uh, just a corner of the library there, and then you see a couple of buildings in front of you there, which uh, has both administration as well as our College of Pharmacy are located in those two buildings that are right in the foreground. Um, on the left half of the page, um, about half the way up, roughly at the tree line or so, you'll see there's a, a building there. That's Wilderman Hall, which is where our College of Education and Health Sciences are. And just peeking through the trees there, kind of on the corner of, of Lander Hall, um, just up at the top, you'll see the very corner of Farragut Inn. Uh, that sort of, there's a just a, a little, almost like a triangle or um, shape that you see there, just above Lander Hall, just below the, the trees. Uh, over on the far left hand side there and you can see the corner of Lander Hall. You can also see some of the buildings that we've yet to rehabilitate in the picture. So in behind the College of Pharmacy there, sort of in the center rightish kind of side, is one of the buildings that we are still working to rehabilitate as we take over this, as you can see, quite beautiful portion of the old naval base with a lot of the um, uh, his history that you see here. So this gives you, I guess, a little bit of information about uh, Toro University, California. Now what I'd like to so do is I take you in into all of the our courses, courses that are currently active for me. And I'm logged in right now as a test student. Um, so anything that shows up, you'll see that it's actually called, I think, TUC student. Um, but all of the courses that you're registered in will be located here in the dashboard. So as you can see right now, the only class that I'm currently registered in is this Introduction to Invitational Education, and you can see it's a sample course that we've put together just so folks can get a sense of some of the content that we have. So if I were to click on this, it takes me actually into the course, so you'll see uh, it's a new program, so we don't have the course number available yet, uh, but the first course will be an introduction to invitational education, and as you can see, the course starts with a brief introduction. Now, the presentation, or welcome to EDU, um, number, 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 that's actually the video that you're watching now. So this is this particular one. Uh, after that, you'll notice that if you were to click on presentation instructors, uh, you'll see here's a video for an introduction to Michael Barber, and there's one for Jim O'Connor that's coming soon. Um, always on the left-hand side here, you'll notice the navigation stays up. So if I want to go back to the main page, I click on Home, and that takes me back here. Um, I've got a link to the syllabus where I can go in, and you see I both have the syllabus here available in the website, but I can also access a PDF version of that. And then there's a presentation that goes over the syllabus. Now, we've got the first unit of content available here. Um, so you can see there's unit one, um, and it's called the introduction. And as you can see now, we've got an introduction to unit one. The way in which you want to approach all of this content is you always want to begin in the introduction one. And what we'll do here is we will give you the specific uh, learning objectives or learning outcomes for that particular unit. And there's also going to be an overview video that talks about essentially how to approach this particular unit and then a bit of more information about the unit itself. So I'm going to go back to the home again here now. And then you'll see they all of the units will follow a predictable fashion where you'll have after the introduction there will be readings, then there's going to be some course content, and then um, there's going to be your assignments area. In this case, the assignment is the individual reflections. Um, and you'll see that um, most of the weeks you will see that there is a blog entry that's due. And then each week will end or each unit will end with a unit checklist. Uh, where essentially it gives you a list of all of the things that you're supposed to do uh, throughout the course of the week. Now, over here on the, the left-hand side, I mentioned the navigation a minute ago. You'll see that there's a home button it, that I mentioned takes you back to the home. If there are any specific announcements for the course, like right now there is an announcement that says the sample course is available and tells you a little bit about that. 
Uh, there's a link for the assignments, so all of the assignments that are available to you right now, and right now it's just this individual reflections one, and if you were to click on this, it tells you a little bit about it, and you can see like there's a grading scheme there as well, so it gives you some information about it. Modules basically just takes you back to essentially the same thing that Home takes you to, so it takes you to essentially all of the course modules that are here. You will see in addition to any blogs, there's also a discussion forum, and there's a couple of pinned discussions, uh, TUC Cafe, as well as support and questions. Now, the TUC Cafe is designed just to be a forum um, that is just here for you to talk, for you to use uh, for whatever purposes you'd like. Essentially, it's non-support issues and non-course related discussions. Uh, so I can also, I could click on discussions over here, but you'll notice that across the top it also drops breadcrumbs along the way. So I can actually use these breadcrumbs to go back to a particular point. So instead of hitting discussion over here, I can actually hit discussion up here and it will take me back to the discussions page. Uh, the other pinned discussion is this support and questions. So in this particular course, there's going to be um, two instructors, myself and, and Jim O'Connor and um, there could be anywhere from 12 to 25 of you. Now, you could email us questions and we will respond to you as soon as we're available, but keeping in mind that at least for our students that are located in Hong Kong, there's a 15-hour time difference most of the time between California and Hong Kong, so that if you were to post a, 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 or email us a question, Depending on the time of day that it is, we might not get back to you for another, you know, 8 or 12 hours. Whereas if you were to post a response here in the support and questions discussion area, you have somewhere between 11 to 24 of your colleagues that might see this, that might know the answer to your question before. And because they're operating on the same time zone that you're operating on, they may respond to that quicker than what... Um, Jim and I are able to. So one of the things we'd encourage you to do is to use these discussion forums. Um, once we start going through and we start completing the assignments, if you were to click on grades, it would tell you your grades here and you could get any feedback that the instructors gave you by clicking on grades. And then you'll also see a link for people here. And in this case, it'll list off all of the people that are in this particular course. Now, in the case of the sample, it's just um, myself as the instructor, Michael Barber, as well as a test student, which is the account that you see here. Um, so this gives you a little bit of an overview of sort of navigating your way around this particular course. Um, so I'm back at the modules area now, or the home area. So as you go through, you'll get some more information about the course, but this will give you a sense just essentially letting you navigate yourself around.